middle length sayings number 18 the ball of honey and it's just this very good teaching on just that on taking usually sometimes the first steps into understanding what the deeper aspects of the Buddhist teaching is called Paticca Samuppada dependent origination but it's also well in, it's an in an accessible form in a kind of way that is quite easy to understand and it talks about how in fact distractions arise and proliferations propagations and how they arise and to to remember that process is quite quite useful um, and on retreat that's why it's particularly helpful because it's really setting the tone for after around the meditation what what happens because in the meditation everything is fine I guess <laughs> but it's coming out and then understanding as soon as we come out first right there what is that coming out and not you know I'm just saying that as a question it's always reflecting you know that's Pachawekana practice why did we come out of that particular sit and what was the, the reason uh, then what is awareness doing all around and is it understanding with wisdom is it continuing the release so but to understand the release, we need to understand how the mind works. So it's always good. Once the awakened one was living amongst the Sakyans in Kapilavatu, so that's his hometown, in the Banyan Tree Hermitage. Then sometime in the morning after taking his bowl and robe, the awakened one entered Kapilavatu for alms. Then after his alms round, he went to the great forest to meditate for the day and sat down at the root of a young bilva tree sapling, sacred tree of the Hindus. At that time, Dandapani, the Sakyan, was walking around and decided to follow him and inquire and also went to the great wood. He went to the young bill of a tree, approached the awakened one, and exchanged respectful greetings. Then leaning on his stick, that's actually what Dandapani means, is stick in hand, that's his name. <laughs> so he's leaning on his stick, keeping a stand beside the Buddha, like the Buddha is probably sitting and he's just, you know, <laughs> so it's not very respectful. What, what do you say, monk? What do you teach? And the Buddha replied, I teach in a way, friend, that none in this world, with its devas, maras, and brahmas, this generation of monks and brahmins, of kings and people, none in this world stand fight and that this Brahmin lives disengaged from sense en sensory engagement has gone beyond perplexity cut away mental agitation and whatever he does he is tensionless without craving uninclined to any kind of conceiving 
this is what I say, Brahman, this is what I teach. When this was said, Dandapani the Sakyan shook his head, pulled his tongue, frowned his forehead in three lines, and left leaning on his stick. Later in the evening, the awakened one stood from meditation, went to the banyan tree hermitage, and sat down on a prepared seat. Then he addressed the monks, saying, saying all that had just taken place. When this was said, a certain monk asked Bhante Bhagawa, how can it be said that none in this world with its devas, maras, and brahmas, this generation of monks and brahmins, kings and people, none in the world stands fight? Pray, Bhante, how does the awakened one, that brahmin, live disengaged from sensory engagement? having gone beyond perplexity, cut away mental agitation. And whatever he does, he is tensionless, uninclined to any kind of conceiving. Then the Buddha replies, the propagation of concepts fabricated by the mind is the cause of a person, of a person's bewilderment. These concepts should not be delighted in, nor praised, nor indulged in. Here ends the inclination to discontent, the inclination to irritation, the inclination to views, the inclination to doubt, the inclination to pride, the inclination to longing for becoming, the inclination to carelessness. How could there be any inclination if there are any concepts? This is the end of being given to rods and swords, fights and arguments, rivalry and fault-finding, slander and lies. This is where unrighteous, unwholesome mental states stop entirely. This is what the Exalted One said. Then the happy one stood from his seat and went into his residence. Not long after the exalted one's departure, those monks thought, Is it not, friends, that the exalted one, having exclaimed this short statement, leaving most of the meaning unexplained, stood from his seat and went into his residence? Who else could explain the meaning of this concise statement? When the monks considered, there is the elder Maha Kachana, who is both praised and honored by the teacher and by our fellow wise meditators. The venerable Maha Kachana is able to explain the meaning in detail of this concise statement. And Perhaps we should approach the Venerable Mahakachana and inquire about the meaning of this. Then the monks approached the Venerable Mahakachana, ex exchanged respectful greetings, and sat down to the side. Then the monks asked, Friend Kachana, the Bhagava, having put down this statement without explaining the meaning in detail, stood up and left. Please, would you explain it to us? Friends, just as a person who wanted heartwood, who was looking for heartwood, who was walking around in search of heartwood, would walk by a great tree standing thick with heartwood, and he would pass over the roots, pass over the trunk, and he would think to look for heartwood amongst the branches and the leaves. So you come to me, venerable ones, when you were face to face with the teacher, having passed the awakened one by, now you ask me to, ex to explain the meaning of this. Friends, the awakened one knows what is to be known. He sees what, it's to, what is to be seen. He is vision. He is knowledge. He is the Dhamma. He is Brahma. He is the teacher, the explainer, the carrier of meaning, the giver of the deathless. 
the master of the Dhamma, the truth finder. It was at that time that you should have asked the awakened one to explain. And you should have remembered what he would have said to you. Indeed, friend Kachana, the awakened one knows what is to be known. He sees what is to be seen. He is the master of the Dhamma, the truth finder. At that time, we should have asked the awakened one to explain and remember it. Still, the elder Kachana is both praised and other, honored by the teacher and by fellow wise meditators. Please expound the meaning of this if it is not troublesome. Then, friends, listen and apply your minds closely to what I will say. The Venerable Mahakachana said this, Friends, when the Exalted One said, The propagation of concepts fabricated by the mind is the cause of a person's bewilderment. These concepts should not be delighted in, nor praised, nor indulged in. Here ends the inclination to discontent, the inclination to irritation, the inclination to views, the inclination to doubt, the inclination to pride, the inclination to longing for becoming and to carelessness. This is the end of being given to rods and swords, fights and arguments, rivalry and fault-finding, slander and lies. This is where unrighteous, unwholesome states of mind stop entirely. This is how I understand the meaning of this. Because of the eye and shapes, visual consciousness becomes manifest. The meaning of these three is called visual contact. Because of contact there is sensation. What one feels, that one perceives. What one perceives, that one thinks about. What one thinks about, that one mentally propagates. And what one mentally propagates, that is the cause for a person's bewilderment by propagation of concepts fabricated by the mind regarding past, present, and future shapes that can be experienced by the eye. Because of the ear and sounds, auditive consciousness becomes manifest. The meaning of these three is called auditive contact. Because of contact, there is a sensation. What one feels, that one perceives. What one perceives, that one thinks about. What one thinks about, that one mentally propagates. And what one mentally propagates, that is the cause for that person's bewilderment by propagation of concepts fabricated by the mind regarding past, present, and future sounds that can be experienced by the ear. Because of the nose and udders, olfactive consciousness becomes manifest. The meaning of these three is called contact. Because of contact, there is sensation. What one feels, that one perceives. What one perceives, that one thinks about. What one thinks about, that one mentally propagates. And what one mentally propagates, that is the cause for that person's bewilderment by propagation of concepts fabricated by the mind. Regarding past, present, and future odors that can be experienced by the nose. All these unwholesome states in the mind 
they are all propagation. If there was no propagation, they wouldn't exist. One needs to think to be angry. One doesn't think they're not angry. <laughs> and, that, and that's propagating. So getting into the, the story of it, getting into like diving deep and personal with it. <laughs> but when we just see the process, it's actually just a process. There's nothing personal about it. And all of these propagation like anxiety fear jealousy anger hatred longing for something that is not here it's all rooted in all of these six senses and that's where they come up and we feed them through propagation and then they take the shape of all these states because of the tongue and flavors, gustative consciousness becomes manifest. The meeting of these three is called gustative contact. Because of contact, there is a sensation. What one feels, that one perceives. What one perceives, that one thinks about. What one thinks about, that one mentally propagates and what one mentally propagates that is the cause for that person's bewilderment by propagation of concepts fabricated by the mind regarding past present and future flavors that can be experienced by the tongue because of the body and tangibles tactile consciousness becomes manifest. The meaning of these three is called tactile contact. Because of contact there is a sensation, a knowing. What one feels, that one perceives. What one perceives, that one thinks about. What one thinks about, that one mentally propagates and what one mentally propagates that is the cause for that person's bewilderment by propagation of concepts fabricated by the mind regarding past present and future tangibles that can be experienced by the body because of the mind and mental objects mental consciousness becomes manifest and that's a very interesting one the meeting of these three is called mental contact because of mental contact there is a sensation what one feels that one perceives what one perceives that one thinks about what one thinks about that one mentally propagates and what one mentally propagates that is the cause for that person's bewilderment by propagation of concepts fabricated by the mind regarding past present and future mental objects that can be experienced by the mind and they all funnel down to this one <laughs> the mental objects so it's quite quite clever the Buddha how he's taking all these senses and he's like and this one <laughs> it's all it ends up here thus friends paying attention to the eye paying attention to shapes Paying attention to a visual consciousness, one can discern the experience of visual contact. Paying attention to the experience of visual contact, one can discern the experience of sensation, visual sensation. 
paying attention to the experience of sensation, one can discern the experience of concepts. That's where it starts. And see here, that's usually paying attention to sensation. Vedana, Vedana, and then Vedana, Pachaya, Tanha. Tanha is called craving or that just longing, thirst. But here it's called concepts. So that's one of the reasons why it's nicely integrated into a, something we can easily work with because it's more it's closer to what we live actually paying attention to the experience of concepts and then feeding the concepts with more of our awareness that simply just means just putting our awareness on that choosing to put awareness on that instead of letting it go and just doing that, one can discern the experience of thinking. So the concept is the kind of the seed and then the tree <laughs> comes up. Paying attention to the experience of thinking, one can discern the experience of propagation of concepts fabricated by the mind. Paying attention to the ear, paying attention to sounds, paying attention to auditive consciousness. One can discern the experience of auditive contact. Paying attention to the experience of auditive contact, one can experience, one can discern the experience of auditive sensation paying attention to the experience of auditive sensations, one can discern the experience of concepts. Paying attention to the experience of concepts, one can discern the experience of thinking. Paying attention to the experience of thinking, one can discern the experience of propagation of concepts fabricated by the mind. Paying attention to the nose, paying attention to others, paying attention to olfactive consciousness, one can discern the experience of olfactive contact. Paying attention to the experience of olfactive contact, one can discern the experience of olfactive sensation. Paying attention to the experience of olfactive sensation, one can discern the experience of concepts. Paying attention to the experience of concepts, one can discern the experience of thinking. Paying attention to the experience of thinking, one can discern the experience of propagation of concepts fabricated by the mind. Paying attention to the tongue, Paying attention to the body, paying attention to the mind, paying attention to mental states, mental objects, and paying attention to mental consciousness. One can discern the experience of mental contact. Paying attention to the experience of mental contact, one can discern the experience of mental sensation. Paying attention to the experience of mental sensation, one can discern the experience of concepts. Paying attention to the experience of concepts, one can discern the experience of thinking. Paying attention to the experience of thinking, one can discern the experience of propagation of concepts fabricated by the mind. Now the release, and interestingly here, we see how 
Bhante Mahakachana took the template of the Four Noble Truths, the Four Awakened Understandings, starting with explaining what is, then how it originates by paying attention unto this. First he explains the process, then he explains how it arises. Then now he's explaining the release. So that's always uh, interesting to keep in our minds. And this is the template of the Four Noble Truths. Not paying attention to the eye, friends. Not paying attention to shapes. Not paying attention to visual consciousness. One cannot discern the experience of contact. Not paying attention to the experience of visual contact. One cannot discern the experience of visual sensation. Not paying attention to the experience of visual sensation. One cannot discern the experience of concept. not paying attention to the experience of concept, one cannot discern the experience of thinking. Not paying attention to the experience of thinking, one cannot discern the experience of propagation of concepts fabricated by the mind. Not paying attention to the ear, not paying attention to the nose, not paying attention to the tongue, not paying attention to the body, not feeding awareness into the senses, but continually letting go, not paying attention, releasing awareness from the mind, not paying attention to mental objects, not paying attention to mental consciousness. One cannot discern the experience of mental contact. Not paying attention to the experience of mental contact. One cannot discern the experience of sensation. Not paying attention to the experience of sensation, one cannot discern the experience of concepts. Not paying attention to the experience of concepts, one cannot discern the experience of thinking. Not paying attention to the experience of thinking, one cannot discern the experience of propagation of concepts fabricated by the mind. So now we know as soon as we're thinking, we're already far out. <laughs> On the retreat, of course, <laughs> for monks it's all the time, but as much as you can. But on retreat, this is the effort we're trying to make, the effort to let go. This is how I understand the meaning of this statement. Bearing this in mind, friends, you should go to the Awakened One. Then He might explain to you the meaning of this, and you should remember what He will say. After having delighted and rejoiced in these words, the monks stood up and went to the Awakened One and said everything that had taken place in their whole discussion with Venerable Mahakachana. This is how the Venerable Mahakachana, in this manner, in this way, in these words, explained the meaning. Then the Buddha said, Monks, Mahakachana is wise. Mahakachana is, has great wisdom. 
you should remember the meaning of this statement as it was explained by him. Mahakachana has explained this in the same way that I would have explained it. That is the meaning, monks. This is how you should bear it in mind. When this was said, the Venerable Ananda asked the Awakened One, Bhante, just as a man overwhelmed and weakened by hunger would walk up to a ball of honey and wherever he would taste it he would get a sweet and delicious taste in the same way Bhante wherever one is if a wise monk were to call to mind and investigate the meaning of this exposition of the Dhamma with discernment he or she would gain gladness of heart and peace of mind. Bhante, what is the name of this explanation of the, on the Dhamma? Ananda, you can remember this exposition on the Dhamma as the exposition of the bowl of honey. This is what the Awakened One said, glad at heart. The Venerable Ananda rejoiced in the Awakened One's words. And this uh, hopefully will give me enough time to prepare us for tomorrow's talk and will serve as an introductory talk <laughs> for tomorrow which goes much deeper into dependent origination and breaking it down the six sets of six is a quite quite adequate continuation of this this introduction so Let's share our merits. Dukha patta chani dukha bhaya patta chani bhaya soka patta chani soka hondu sabbe pi pani no irang no punyang sabbe satta nu morantu sabba sampatti siddhiya aga satta jabu matta Deva Naga Mahi Dikha Punyang Tanga Numo Ritva Chirang Rakhantu Buddha Sasasanam May suffering ones be suffering free and the fear struck fearless be. May the grieving shed all grief and may all beings find relief. May all beings share these merits that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth, devas and nagas of mighty powers, share these merits of ours. May they long protect the Buddha Sasana Sadhu Sadhu.